Now, when I first got to uh, Jenkins Shelter yesterday, it was rather early, about 4.30. But uh, I could feel the day had worn on me. And it was not so much yesterday, but the, the days before that. But uh, before I talk about that, I'd like to, you know, pan here. When I first got to the shelter, it had these, these tarps here. Um, that one and this one here. And they stretched out all the way across, covering the entire shelter. And as I was looking at it, I could see it in the distance coming up the trail. Blue. And I'm like, oh, a blue shelter. And, and, and some, and I, and I hate to say it, but some idiots um, brought these tarps up here and left them up here and they and they had the whole thing covered freaked me out I, 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 I pulled them down because you know what about air circulation what I, I don't know why they did it maybe the boogeyman or you know they needed a door I would say definitely a day there's a gravel road you know here and the problem with gravel roads is any moron with a with a truck and a driver's license can drive within a perhaps a mile or so to a shelter to a campsite and and uh, <clears throat> and they can you know bring cans and and of uh, beanies and and weenies and all sorts of stuff leave it all here of course but it takes all kinds and that's my point was is that uh, we need to emphasize um, leave no trace but with that said, I want to go back to the map here. <clears throat> and I should have did this a few other times along. I know I did it once, but I just want to say coming out of resupply would have been off of this map here. And the reason why, uh, the moment, the things I want to speak about is uh, it is August now. And though I have in the past uh, uh, over two months now, perhaps we'll come up on a you know two and a half months at some point certainly in three months and over three months and I'll be probably home by then actually or close on my way but you know coming up you know down below off the map here coming up uh, with the resupply I had uh, two liters of water in my backpack and I hiked on up and uh, getting late in the day had a had a, a late lunch and was running low on water and couldn't find water and it was going through a lot of pasture areas, a lot of cows, a lot of cow poop, and, and going over these man-made fences that separated the fields, the barbed wire, and you had to climb over the barbed wire with these, these little, with these little tripod type, you know, fences, ladders, um, ladders that you climb up over. And by the time I got up to here, it was getting rather late, and there was the North Fork of the Holston River that separated the um, all the farms and all the pastures. And I really, really was uncomfortable about taking water here. You know, the cows, they, you know, they, that's they, a lot of times uh, I have seen, you know, in the weeks that cows, they that a, a river borders the property they step out into the rivers and they take their drink and of course they pee and poop and do whatever the hell they want they're cows but uh, it was getting dark I had no water I took water here I filled up everything six liters and I went on climbed up over a couple um, more of those ladders going up over barbed wire fences I could see to the right over here um, a farm, a farmhouse. So I wanted to hike up more. And getting darker, I found a place over here where there was uh, some apple trees. I set up camp around here. Got my tent up before it got dark, and then I started treating my water. I was so thirsty. I was so dehydrated, and and uh, I. You know, did what I had to do, and I made a supper. I ate supper in the dark, but uh, but I was set up, and you know, I had, you know, I had some water. I was uncomfortable about its source, but I had absolutely no choice in the matter. But I treated it, took care of business, and then the next morning, um, I had just enough water to make breakfast, to uh, fill up my. Uh, 
my my water bladder and I hiked on and I figure I'll go to uh, the Knot Mile Branch Shelter and as I as I hiked up and I, and it was uh, probably about 10 10 30 in the morning I got to the Mont the Knot Mall Branch Shelter and uh, there was no water there and uh, there were two guys camping one uh, Rick and uh, caveman and caveman's dog and that's where I met them uh, captain and being no water we we hiked on and we were able to go after that they had absolutely no water I was I, actually I was out of water too by that time and we hiked about another mile there was a creek here and we found water here and then so we stayed and we watered up and uh, you know went on our way after that and we had hiked for quite a while and we're moving on and going to uh, have a, a quick lunch and then there was supposed to be a, a, a spring up here as we go up the uh, chestnut ridge um, we we're looking to uh, camp at the chestnut knob shelter but the spring fed pond was uh, was dry and by the time I got there uh, I was you know, I had been, you know, at this time I had started conserving the water that I was carrying, just drinking enough because you, you just never know when you're going to run out. You just never know where you're going to find that next water source and you don't want to be completely out. And we have, we have seen, you know, in the, in the past couple of months where I had run out of water, or I almost ran out of, out of water or I got to a campsite with no water and all I had was a liter left and I had to use it sparingly and, eat a dry dry meal or not eat a meal at all and conserve my water because water is the biggest thing out here you can bring your food but you can't bring all your water you have to find it so by the time I got here there was no water I actually was there was a fly infestation here and uh, they actually swarmed and landed on me followed me for over a mile until I got into the tree line again and I decided that when I get there and I'll get to the chestnut knob shelter which was about 4400 feet I will I will look at my water if I don't have enough water I will then hike on it would it was still daylight and in, in, in two days of de dehydration with water problems was it really just took its toll on me but I get to the the chestnut knob shelter and I saw that I had a liter and a half of water left and that's from conserving not knowing where my next water source will come from and just taking sips as I'm hiking becoming dehydrated but functional so caveman was there captain was there they had enough water to get them by so so we had all decided that you know, and, you know, we will stay here instead of hiking this extra mile and a half to uh, Walker Gap, where it was confirmed that there was a water source there. So we stayed here, made our supper, and uh, really, the next morning, neither of us had water. So we hiked without water for that. You know, it was pretty much downhill to. Um, a mile and a half to the Walker Gap, and though it was just a trickle, it was a it was a uh, a nice seep, a really nice spring that was just bubbling out of the ground. So that's just fresh, pure mother mother earth water. So we actually stayed there for quite a while and drank an awful lot of water, filled up our water reserves, had breakfast shared coffee and stories and moved on from there so so if you see now we're all the way you know over here and and uh, like I said just to recap you know we've got a water you know source here I plan on stopping for lunch and then a big push all the way to the shelter here and we'll see you know um, you start with a plan and and you got to be flexible because uh, 
Geez, things change. I remember I planned my trip a year and a half ago before I started out on the Appalachian Trail. And I had said to myself, you know, I could have all the preparations, all the food, all of, all of the gear and all the fanciness and this and that and the other thing. But once you take, once you're up on top of that mountain and take your first step, everything can change. And everything did change. It's just amazing. And, and you've got to be able to be flexible and roll with the changes. Thank you very much. That was fun. Yeah, breakfast is pretty simple, actually. And I use powdered milk. And the, uh, the trick with powdered milk is that the more powder you use, the more it tastes like milk. Look at that. And Bob just got out of his uh, jacuzzi there. You know, he just flew in from uh, Boca, you know, for a visit. And uh, he, he said that he was... He missed me in that, uh, you know, he just wanted to stop by. But yeah, so, so breakfast really pretty much consists of Ziploc bags. Now Ziploc bags, I think, is one of the greatest inventions in the world when it comes to uh, backpacking. You know, right, I'd say it's before duct tape of uh, greatest overall invention. But here I have a big old sack of... Uh, Really uh, nasty, uh, you know, instant coffee. And this is my breakfast bag. I, I use uh, mostly um, cereal. So I have uh, cold cereal. I have milk, a lot of granola. Do you know that at the grocery store in Hampton, they don't sell granola. It's just, I guess, not manly enough for the town of Hampton. Now, this is a really good brand. Uh, you yeah, know, bare, bare Naked down there, yeah is uh, they have variety. So the, I think for me anyways, the, the trick is variety. A lot of different flavors. And this here is is uh, those Nestle Nutrition or Carne, well, those, those, those breakfast packets that are, that are, you know, the, uh, oh, whatever they're called, those, those breakfast drinks, those Carnation Essentials or whatever they're called. And, and they're actually, you know, and, I'll add that to my cereal sometimes just to give it a boost. I did that yesterday morning and I have a few packs here left so I'll skip that today do it tomorrow. I, I stopped early yesterday and came here and just completely rehydrated and took my time you know before supper last night yesterday you know and uh, and just just rested. I was worn out from all the days prior, um, hiking late into dark, dehydrated, searching for water, and it's it's all part of the adventure. I mean, you're out backpacking in the wilderness, and granted, it's a it's a established trail, the Appalachian Trail, but still, you're you're out here on your own, and all you have is you and your backpack and everything and the things that you brought. And, you know, the ability to find water, if you can. <laughs>